Good morning ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to roll. It is quarter after five. Yeah, just gotta wait till uh, that one guy over there is trying to back her in. <coughs> just gonna turn on my lights so I can see a little bit. Uh, looks like I'll be alright. Come on, back her up already. Should be okay. Yeah. Oh, he's all crooked there. I don't know if he doesn't know how to back or what, but this truck stop always gets full at night, right? Yeah. Whole oh, wheel. We made it out of there. <coughs> so here we go. We are an early start this morning try and get out of here early and we did managed to do that so that's fantastic look at all them trucks parked up here not even uh, spots to park and like they block each other there <laughs> yeah that's why I don't really like driving late at night into the night you know because that's what's gonna happen you know I'll get to the truck stop and there won't be any parking left, you know. This guy wants to get in here as well, so. Anyways, let's get ourselves back on the interstate. I know it's going to be dark, so we'll see what we'll be able to show you until it gets daylight. In 600 feet, take the entrance to the right on I-64 West. So then uh, we'll see you guys all down the road somewhere. Well guys, we got a car on fire. Car on fire, yeah. Whoa, yeah, that is bad. That is a Dodge Caravan on fire. Ha, huh. looked like nobody else was on scene yet either. Oh well, that happens. I had just pulled off over here at the rest area to use the restroom and uh, just got back on the highway and we see a Dodge Caravan on fire. Wow, that's crazy. Not every day that I see that. I mean, I have seen it before where a car is on fire. If you guys go down to my channel and my uh, videos, there's a car in uh, British Columbia one time that was on fire. But the way it goes I guess sometimes uh, things go wrong on a vehicle and they catch fire it doesn't just happen in the movies <laughs> yeah it happens in the real world too when cars get on fire but anyways I think we got about another eh, 45 minutes or so and I will be at the uh, petrol truck stop here on uh, I-65, their 201 mile marker. I think we're gonna go roll in there and grab us some breakfast. Or some dinner, whatever. Whatever we'll come up with at that time. We'll go have us a bite to eat. I'm kinda getting hungry. And I've been driving for over three hours already, so I can go stop in there and have my half an hour break. And, uh, and then we'll get back on the road. 
not that far to Chicago from there, so I'll be going to Chicago in good time. Won't have to worry about the rush hour traffic too much, I think. At least that's what I think. But anyways, we'll go down over there to the petrol and then uh, we'll see what we'll be able to show you all day long today. Here we are, just taking our exit to go to our truck stop. And we'll go to the Petro up here. I think they call it like ramming tone or something like that up here. So we'll go up to this Petro. I like it here at this Petro. It's nice restaurant. 1.5 miles. Yeah. Turn on North Main Street. US 231. That's right. Let's go in here. I don't know why this guy would come out over here. The exit is actually over there. Yeah, maybe that's his first time over here, so maybe he doesn't know better. That could be. Here we are. Let's go find us a parking spot. Now we'll go grab us a good bite to eat, I guess. The man has got to eat too, right? That's what they say. Alright, so I guess we'll see you guys all a little bit later. Well, look at this, guys. We are already in Chicago. Yeah, that's right. Not that much snow in here in Chicago anymore. Yeah, they're still doing some construction up here, but look at that. We got 45 speed limit up here. I'm doing 47. Look at how fast these four wheelers are passing by me. I don't know, seems like nobody respects the law up here in Chicago area, but oh well, I ain't going to be the one paying the ticket when they get pulled over, right? That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it, that's right. But it is a little bit cloudy today, I'm sort of thinking about going up to South Beloit, filling up the truck over there. I think that's what I'm gonna do. That way I have a full tank of fuel and I don't have to worry about fueling up there in Minnesota or, or, uh, or Wisconsin somewhere, you know? I should be good to go. I don't know how far we got up to South Beloit, probably an hour. Should be in South Beloit. Not really that far, so. But anyways. We're just cruising along here at our speed that we can. And I think pretty soon we should be through this construction section here. And at least we managed to beat, I think, the real heavy duty traffic. Because I'm already on the uh, west side of Chicago, so I'm pretty much outside of Chicago already. But that's good. At least we managed to beat the traffic, heavy duty traffic. So. That's what's most important for me. Yeah, well, let's continue on with our journey here and see what happens. I have just entered into Wisconsin. That's right, we did decide to go and fuel up here in South Beloit, Illinois. Yeah, we fueled up 147 gallons. That's right. But the fuel was a lot more expensive up here than what it was in uh, South Carolina. We only got 147 gallons. It was like $307. Remember over there at uh, South Carolina, we fueled up for 225 gallons. That came out to $382. Yeah, see, that's how much more money that was if you... Uh, fuel at the place where it's more money but I had to fuel also and it's more expensive to further uh, north I go so I'll probably go and fuel up tomorrow at uh, in Steinbach at the co-op once I get home but uh, so that way I have some Canadian fuel in there Construction ahead. but this is a good stretch yet to get home yet so it's probably about a 13 hour 14 hour drive from where I'm at right now for me there's the speed that I drive Somebody else, uh, they can, it's 
supposedly make it an 11 hours from here from South Beloit to the border but uh, that is pushing it for me so I would never do that they could probably some guys claim they can make it uh, home in about 12 and a quarter hours from here but I wouldn't recommend that to me that's pushing the logbook or that's driving illegal but some guys can drive faster and I guess if you can't really drive faster if you want to drive faster speed I guess you can do it uh, somebody's asking about the scale up here on the CB so I don't know I can't see what they're doing yet they are just about to hit the scale so we'll know here in a minute or two what they are doing but uh, anyways uh, I can drive faster too if I want but I choose not to I choose to drive 60 mile an hour on a regular basis uh, yeah so the odd time I do drive faster if the speed limit is lower I obviously drive slower but uh, on an average I drive 60 mile an hour that's usually my speed going down the highway that's what I like I feel comfortable driving that speed so uh, but as you I don't know if you guys can be able to see it here on the camera but there is light flurries in the air so I don't know uh, hopefully it's not going to snow too much so we can uh, continue driving right so we don't have a blizzard up here but anyways let's continue on and let's uh, see what happens today all right ladies and gentlemen we have officially made it to Black River Falls, Wisconsin. That's right. And uh, guess what? We had ourselves a nice shower. I'm smelling good. I feel good. I feel good. I don't know. I'm not that good in saying that part. But uh, anyways, we went inside, had a shower. Went and had a bite to eat. Now we're ready to go to bed. I don't even think I'm going to be editing anything tonight. Uh, I think I'll wait till I get home. Only got tomorrow and then I'll be home and uh, I do have enough videos up there to cover for tomorrow. So uh, we should be okay. We should be okay. That's right. <clears throat> but uh, I don't really have too much other than that to say. I already booked, in a, booked my truck into uh, the shop for Thursday. And it's uh, nothing major, it just uh, needs an oil change done. Every once in a while we need to get it maintenance done on it, right? So I like to keep my truck in good shape, maintain it. So I booked it in and uh, we're going to do an oil change on it. Uh, do a few other things. I think we're going to change the uh, cab filter. Going to get the uh, big filter for the motor. We're going to get that washed because mine is a washable uh, filter. So I can just uh, wash it with a pressure washer and it's done. So we're going to get that done. Uh, the mirrors on the hood, uh, both of them on both sides of them, exactly the same nut on the short piece for the, uh, I guess for the extension or whatever you want to call it for, for that mirror there, uh, the, the, uh, the nut to tighten it up is uh, both of them are cracked. I can't believe it exactly the same on both sides. Like it's just weird but oh yeah, well that happens so we're gonna get that fixed and uh, I have my ABS light uh, come on every once in a while when I drive a little bit into uh, a wet road or something like that so uh, I am going to try and remember to mention that to him and so he hopefully can uh, check it out and uh, see maybe the wire like they has a plug-in where the uh, sensor comes out of the wheel a little bit uh, they have a wire that comes out for a little while and then there's a connection uh, to the new wire so they can always just unplug it and put a new sensor in if they need to right so uh, sometimes what happens is uh, if there's not enough uh, electric grease in between the connections then sometimes water will get in there and then uh, I'll get a code on uh, on the on the on the dashboard they're saying that my abs is not working or it's acting up or whatever you know so uh that seems to be an issue with the volvo at least sometimes uh, with the abs sensors and all that so uh hopefully we'll be able to get that fixed and that's about it i didn't i don't uh i haven't noticed anything else other than that but i mean you bring it into a shop and they uh 
climb underneath there, climb around and look at everything. It's uh, a little easier for them to see things, you know, because they're the ones that do fixed trucks and they, they see things, you know. Uh, like a while back ago, a month ago or so, they, uh, when I had my truck in there, they noticed that I had a wheel seal leaking and my hanger bearing was shot, right? So I didn't see that. So, oh well, sometimes I miss things and sometimes they miss things. So, but no matter what, uh, I got a good mechanic. They are very good people there. He's got a very good crew there that uh, he works with. So, uh, we're gonna bring it in on Thursday and we're just gonna do a reset at home and hopefully get out on Friday again. So uh, that's a plan for now. But uh, that's about pretty much all I got. So we'll see you again tomorrow. So stick around for tomorrow and see what kind of goodies we'll be able to show you. So have a good one everybody. We'll catch you tomorrow. behind me that day is gonna come